Hello and welcome to another historic video. Today I'm very excited to present this black, white and red or Mardu colored Elder Giants deck that gets to play Croxa alongside the new Flage. And in this deck we can actually play these Elder Giants and keep them on the battlefield without having to sacrifice them by playing them alongside Torpor Orb, a 2 mana artifact, saying creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. And it's also worth noting that Torpor Orb is just a pretty good card in the current meta with the Boros energy decks having a lot of creatures that trigger when stuff enters a battlefield, so Torpor Orb can also shut all of those down. And then we also have Doorkeeper Thrall, which has a very similar effect on a 1-2 creature with Flash and Flying, and this one also applies to artifacts entering the battlefield. There's a few other creatures we could be playing instead of the Thrall. The Honor Guard comes to mind, there's Strict Proctor, and we could also play with Hushbringer, but Thrall having Flash means we can maybe play it in the opponent's end step when they're tapped out, so they cannot really stop the combo. And the combo is simply having one of these effects in play, follow them up with one of our Elder Giants. Now, admittedly, Croxa is not going to trigger when it enters, making the opponent a discard, but we'll still get to keep the 6-6 on the battlefield, and then when a Croxa attacks, we'll still get the ability, making each opponent a discard a card, and each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way loses 3 life. And then a Flage at 3 mana will deal 3 damage to any targets and gain 3 life whenever it attacks, or if it enters a battlefield, assuming there's no Torpor Orb effect in play. So that's our game plan. Then we can also potentially attack with our giants right away if we can give them haste, which we can do with a Bitter Reunion if we pay one mana and sacrifice it. And in the meantime, the Bitter Reunion can discard and draw to help assemble all these various pieces. And then we also get to play with a new Arena of Glory, which has been awesome in this deck. Enters tapped unless we control a mountain, so it's actually going to come into play untapped a decent amount of the time. And then we can pay a red mana, tap it, and exert it, so it's not going to untap next turn. But then we get to add a double red, and if this mana is spent on a creature spell, it will gain haste until end of turn. So theoretically, we could give multiple creatures haste with the ability, but that does require a lot of mana in play, so we can spend the red on both of those creatures. But uh, more realistically, we're giving one of our giants Giants haste with it, which is already good enough, as we can immediately attack with Flage, maybe take out a creature, gain some life, and deal a lot of damage as well. And then same with Croxa, making the opponent a discard. And then uh, tying everything together, we've got Faithless Looting to draw to and discard to. This also helps fill the graveyard in the event that we just want to escape one of our Giants, which can also be part of our game plan if we don't find Torpor Orb or Thrall, or maybe the opponent answered it. And our fetch land here, Prismatic Vista, is also a great way to help fill the graveyard for escape, as well as being a revolt enabler for Fatal Push, which we're also playing as some cheap interaction. And then one of the last additions in this deck was actually Gamble, since this adds a little bit of redundancy to the deck, since now if we don't have a Torpor Orb effect in our hand, we can Gamble, search our library for a card, put it in hand, and then discard a card at random. Hopefully we won't have discarded one of those that we just searched up. And then if we already have a Torpor Orb effect, now we can search for one of our Giants, hopefully keep it in hand, but even if we do discard our Giant, we can still maybe escape it out of the graveyard. And then occasionally we can look for some of our other answers, like maybe our two copies of Deafening Clarion, which can deal 3 damage to each creature, can also give our creatures lifelink until end of turn, so sometimes just giving our 6-6 six, six creatures lifelink can help win a race, but in addition with the 3 damage from Flage, we can maybe take care of some larger threats as well. And then we also have the full set of Thoughtseize to maybe take away answers that the opponent might have for our combo, or just to disrupt the opponent's game plan, and it's another cheap card that will end up in our graveyard to help escape. And then our mana base has one of each basic that we can find with our Prismatic Vista, as we mentioned. And then quite a few dual lanes, mostly mountains for Arena of Glory purposes. So four Blood Crypt, three Sacred Foundry, and then Concealed Courtyard. So we can uh, save ourselves a little bit of damage by not playing Godless Shrine. And then we've got Cavern of Souls times two as well, which can name Giant to make them uncounterable, which also applies if we escape them. So that's another nice upside if we're playing against blue control decks. And then we get to free roll Jigantha as our companion, so may as well. Can also be additional discard fodder for a bitter union or faithless looting in the late game, but occasionally we can actually play a 5 5, and especially with an arena giving it haste, that can hit pretty hard. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand's got potential. We have a thrall into Croxa, turn one. Good looting, then I'll have to discard two cards, and currently I'm pretty happy with everything I have. So, 
think it's just gonna be a uh, tapped sacred foundry pass a turn and then turn two thrall with cavern naming giants and then turn three hasty croxa maybe all right bonus on the energy deck without lurus so they could have their own flage which is kind of uh tricky here but i think i'm still on the thrall plan into croxa not as good as a hasty flage would be but so be it Doesn't seem worth it to gamble to try and get Flage when uh, I need to get the Thrall in play as well. At least Thrall will shut down Raptor and Guide of Souls this turn. And yeah, Hasty Croxa while we can. Seems fine. And then I could still gamble here, try and get Flage. And we discarded it. Alright. Can still maybe escape it later. Opponent discards a plane, takes 3 damage, plus another 7. It's already down to 10. They kind of need to deal with Thrall to enable their synergies, but then Croxa is a pretty fast clock. Opponent does have the Discharge. Let's see if they have more answers. Currently three cards in Graveyard, and yeah, opponent also has the Static Prison. So all of a sudden, both our threats are gone, opponent's got energy aplenty, and we could be in trouble. Now they can't afford to pay 3 energy, otherwise Croxa comes back. Found a Torpor Orb, that's good. And then we can still keep up Fatal Push. Looting is a way to fill the graveyard for escape. But then I also want a fourth land in play, and I want to get Torpor Orb down. So I think it's still just Torpor Orb, keep up Fatal Push. And then we'll see what we need to take out. If our opponent plays their own Flage, then I may need to enable Revolt to take it out with Fatal Push here. Opponent draws with Canyon. And do I just take it, or do I take out probably the Amptor Amptor? Take 3, down to 12. Maybe they play in a Jani second main, which could be scarier. Yeah, I'll hang on to the Fatal Push. Right, opponent passes. Thought sees the draw. So now looting can maybe set up Flage with haste next turn. Or we can uh, just go for Hasty Croxa now. Yeah, I won't have the right color combinations to play Croxa and Thoughtseize, but even if our opponent has another Discharge, they won't have enough energy to take out Croxa. So I think I keep the Fatal Push then, and then I can still play Hasty Croxa right now. Although, honestly, Prismatic Vista is better to set up Flage next turn. So I'll try this. And then I still want a Hasty Croxa, I think, over Hasty Flage. That's also a close call. Almost had enough mana to maybe give both creatures haste. Because Arena does make two red mana. So if you have two creatures that can use up that mana, you can potentially give both haste. But uh, one Hasty Croxa seems to be enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we're missing a Torpor Orb effect. No gamble to try and find it, just double looting and reunion to go digging. This one's close. Might still be good enough. Get a mountain, start with looting. Take it from there. At the very least, we'll be able to escape Flage pretty quickly with all the fetch lands and looting. Right, opponent's a green-white, maybe, cat deck. Yeah, turn one Ocelot Pride kind of feels like facing a Ragavan when you don't have a blocker for it. 
Uh, found our thrall, perfect. Also gets in the way of the Ocelot Pride, perhaps. So I don't need another looting, and what else? Reunion could still be useful to give haste at some point. So I guess a land can go. Don't think we'll need uncounterable in this matchup. And I could see Thoughtseize also being useful. So yeah, the plan next turn, unless something crazy happens, is Flash and Thrall to try and block the Ocelot. And they're already making two tokens here, so they're getting out of hand. But let's just pass. And hope they don't have any Insta Speed removal. Voice of the Blast is gonna grow up to a 4-4, four four, so it survives Flage. So we may need Fatal Push. Okay, so yeah, can play a 6-6 six, six Flage here. And that can at least block voice for a while. And then uh, next turn we can maybe look for an answer with Gamble. Seems okay. Four cards in Graveyard. Um, sure. And then Prismatic Vista might go fetch a Plains. Collected Company makes sense why they're splashing green. But at least if they find a creature like Soul Warden, it's not going to trigger with a Thrall on the battlefield. And yeah, Speak of the Devil, Soul Warden, and another voice. Alright, so on this board, Deafening Clarion would look pretty nice. So could gamble for that, and then Flage can finish off voice. So if I want to maximize my odds of both land and Clarion, I guess we play the land. But I think Clarion is much more important than necessarily casting Clarion this turn. So I think I wait to play the land until after we gamble. And discarded Thoughtseize, perfect. So we get to have our cake and eat it too. And then I guess we will lose the Thrall here, but that's fine. Attack, finish off a voice. And gain more life in the process, and that's good enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have Torpor Orb, Gamble to maybe find one of our Elder Giants. So, yeah, this could work. I don't think I want to play Gamble on turn one, since if we discard Torpor Orb, I'm going to be very sad. So instead we can maybe hold it until after we deploy it. Right, opponents on the Boros deck. And yeah, Torpor Orb, Thrall are both going to be very effective. Probably start with Torpor Orb since it's more reliable. They cannot take it out with a Galvanic Discharge. So no more energy from Guide of Souls. And Jani also doesn't make a token. Yeah, Torpor Orb does a lot against that particular deck. But since our opponent's not playing with Lurus, our opponent could have their own Flage, which, uh, yeah, that's a double-edged sword in this matchup, of course. Now, I don't have a second red source, so I wouldn't be able to gamble and then, let's say, get Croxa and play it. So instead, I might just cast a Reunion, get our Haste Enabler in play. And one courtyard can go. Okay, found an extra red source. So now I could still gamble. And then Fatal Push also way to take out an opposing Flage by enabling Revolt with Bitter Union. So yeah, I think I'm still down to gamble, try and get Flage, uh, which I think is better than Croxa, but it's close. Croxa being cheaper does allow me to play it and give it haste right away. But uh, yeah, let's go for the uh, more exciting card. This card it's Bitter Union, so yeah, we still have Fatal Push. 
And we'll see if our opponent's got Flage as well. Nope, just an Amped Raptor, which doesn't trigger because of Torpor Orb. Yeah, this is kind of ideal. And can quite thought seize, but they shouldn't have much removal that deals with Flage. I guess let's see. Enchantments still trigger, so they could have the uh, Prison to take care of Flage. So that's maybe a reason to wait. Can thought seize in the meantime. And then, all right, never mind, our opponent does have Flage, but they didn't go for it last turn. This time they do. And yeah, now I have to make a decision here. Could also sacrifice Bitter Union and Fatal Push right now, take out Flage, next turn play my own, leaves us in a decent spot. Could also play Thrall and then just block Guide of Souls and they can finish it off with a Bombardment, but that's fine by me. Yeah, drawing an untapped land would be perfect because then I get to play a Hasty Flage and take out theirs. Yeah, Jani would have been perfect alongside Goblin Bombardment. Opponent does take this trade. And find another Flage instead. Alright, I guess we'll just play it and take the trade with theirs. If they offer. And if not, we have Fatal Push, whereas they don't. And then it's gonna take them a while to escape. Especially with our lack of energy. Opponent runs out to Jani anyways. No other cats on the battlefield. Or opponent dealing three to my flage is interesting. Because yeah, I'm gonna take the trade here. I guess this way they could prevent us from blocking the raptor for free as they could just sack a Jani to the Bombardment. Or they have an Igunjo. Alright, that was unexpected. Fair enough, but now Revolt has been enabled, so I can still Fatal Push Flage, and then next turn play a Hasty one. So that works out. Opponent can sack Flage to the Bombardment, to deal one on the way out, but they maybe forgot. And it's go time. I'll still take out a Jani, otherwise they can chump and sacrifice and soak up more damage. Although I guess if I go face I guarantee the life gain, whereas now it kind of goes to waste. So, yeah, kind of an interesting choice here. I think it's still safer to take out a Jani. Otherwise they could draw a different cat, sack it to Bombardment and transform a Jani into a Planeswalker. So, do we play the land out? If I draw like a Faithless Looting, I might want additional discard fodder. And uh, we can already escape Flage with our current mana. So yeah, Putin doesn't have reds to escape. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, despite having their own copy of the Titan, we still got it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have Torpor Orb, Flage, and even Arena of Glory. So we could be attacking with a hasty Flage on turn 3, which is pretty awesome. Now I do need to make sure to get a Mountain for that to work. Don't have to do it turn one, could still get a mountain turn two, arena on three, and then we're good to go. But I guess there's no downside to just playing the fetch land now.
and if I were to top deck the mountain, I can still fetch a plains, so... Alright, find another arena. And Torpor Orb is also pretty good at shutting down Guide of Souls, although given our opponent's not playing with Lurus as companion, they could have their own Flage if they're on a Mardu version. They might just be black-white life gain, of course. But yeah, opponent splashing red as well. And uh, yeah, could just go for Hasty Flage here. If our opponent's got instant speed removal, we're going to be a little sad. But I think uh, it's still worth it. Has to be a pretty specific removal spell to deal with a 6-6. Six, six. And kind of souls down. Alright. And our opponent's got their own. Alright, fair enough. So, yeah, so far we've faced more flages than we've... Uh, Played our own copies, almost. So how do we want to proceed? I mean, our opponent's at 10, so we are technically winning the race. I can maybe start with Bitter Union. Discarding Torpor Orb. Not gonna need a second one. And then... This can name Giants. And then we can still Thought Seize, maybe after attacking. Opponent might take the trade. They don't. So they're at one. And their hand is double Galvanic Discharge. Two of those would be able to take out my Titan. So yeah, definitely gonna take one. And then Ranger Captain can maybe chump, but it's not going to trigger when it enters. Same with Guide and Raptor, so that works for me. I guess they can still finish off Flage with Galvanic Discharge. That's fair. But we're also not too far from escaping our copy. For now we just have some Doorkeeper Thralls, which um, aren't doing a whole lot. If I uh, sacrifice Bitter Union, we still need one more card in Graveyard. So for now, I guess I can put Giganta in hands. And then keep up Thrall. So yeah, the uh, Torpor Orb gives and it also takes. Can chump Flage after it triggers to soak up 6 damage and uh, get an extra card in our graveyard, basically. There was something to be sent for keeping the Thrall, but I just needed the extra card in Graveyard. Because otherwise Flage can take care of, let's say, the Guide of Souls, and then we would be attacking for 7. Now it's going to be a nightmare to start reanimating stuff. Bring back another Guide. Deafening Clarion's not bad. Although, maybe not quite good enough. So yeah, if I sack Reunion... Can still use Arena for a hasty Flage. And then uh, take it from there. Attack, and then do we want to go face or take care of a guide? Killing a guide probably makes more sense. Po 
Golden and Trumps. And then next turn I could even play a hasty Gigantha thanks to the arena. But I might just go for Deafening Clarion, dealing three to all creatures, and then Flage can finish off their copy. Although they're getting close to escaping it as well. Alright, so let's see here. Flage deals damage to Amalia, and then a hasty Gigantha is lethal. So that looks good. If her opponent has Fatal Push, then they can take out my Flage before we deal damage, and then, uh, yeah, that would be bad. So the alternative would be Deafening Clarion, and then I guess Fatal Push would still kind of do it, but I can attack first and then Clarion second main, even though I lose out on the life gain. That way we uh, don't get wrecked by a Fatal Push. And then Clarion clean things up, and I can still play Thrall or Thoughtseize. I mean, I guess I could start by casting Thoughtseize, I suppose. And then we know whether or not there's Fatal Push to worry about. So at this point, I guess we'll just take the Ranger. And then I can Clarion before attacking, so we also gain life. So now our opponent would need an untapped land to escape Flage. But then next turn we have Hasty Gigantha to still close it out. Alright, so it ended up being a pretty interesting game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Halurus. So it could be another energy deck, in which case Torpor Orb is our uh, best card to have. And then Croxa, not a bad follow-up. Opponent could still have the uh, Prison to take care of our artifact. So that's a card we don't want to see. And given that they didn't play a 1-drop, it's kind of more likely for them to have some removal in hand. For now, Goblin Bombardment, maybe setting up an Ajani transformation. But yeah, with the Torpor Orb, they're not going to get the Cat token. If they have different Cats, they can still maybe transform Ajani in the future. And yeah, opponent does have the Static Prison, sadly, so if they also have Ajani, they can immediately transform it. They do. Alright, not much we could do here. Find a Doorkeeper, Thrall. Also dies to Goblin Bombardment, potentially. I guess we'll still keep up Thrall at instant speed. And then uh, take it from there. Not that likely for the opponent to run out of energy. So yeah, I'm not going to try and block a journey to preserve one damage, because then the Thrall is an easy target for the Bombardment. And they have another Ajani, that's another way of transforming. Um, so if I play Thrall now, what happens? The new Ajani doesn't make a token, but they still get to transform Ajani and take out Thrall, so... Yeah, we'll let them keep it. Nothing can break our bond. So that happens. And yeah, the combo of Bombardment plus Ajani is a powerful one. A dark plot ties our Can hope they don't have instant speed removal, and then at least I get to put a Croxa on the battlefield. But that may not be enough. And our opponent can also just sacrifice two cats in response to me casting Croxa to take out Thrall. So they should have most angles covered. Yeah, some versions of this deck only play two copies of Static Prison. Versions that play four, of course, are going to be more likely to interact with our Torpor Orb. And we've got Croxas aplenty, and even though we can make the opponent discard the rest of their hand, it's not really going to matter when a Jani can kill us in a few turns. So I have to go digging, maybe a Deafening Clarion can sort of save me. But it might be too little too late. So, once the reunion, discard one of our many Croxas. If 
find Gamble. I guess for now I can still Croxa, and then next turn maybe Gamble for Deafening Clarion. If I get Flage next turn I could deal 3 to a Jani, but they might have plussed by then. So I think it's just Croxa and Pass. If I Looting, there's no one mana answer to this board, since Fatal Push doesn't deal with a Jani. A Jani is potentially a reason to play uh, our own copy of Static Discharge, and uh, opponent actually had a second Static Prison in hand, so... Now Unstable Amulet gives him more energy to keep Torpor Orb locked away. But if they attack and activate a Jani with a Goblin Bombardment, we might just be dead right now. Or at least close to it. Yeah, they can sacrifice four creatures exactly, and that's game. Alright, GG's. So yeah, despite having designed this deck in part to try and beat the Boros Energy decks, sometimes they still draw their answers and there's not much you can do about it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and up against a Lurus deck. Could be another Boros Energy. This hand has a gamble to try and find a Titan or Torpor Orb, but we're still missing the other half. So I don't think I can keep... This one has some good interaction, but we're not really enacting our own game plan, and the opponent can probably recover from a Clarion, even though it could be effective. So yeah, we might be going to 5 here. Torpor Orb is great. Still no Titans to go with it, but got to keep, and then... How much do we care about Fatal Push? I think I care more about Thoughtseize, maybe taking away an answer for Torpor Orb. And then looting versus reunion is kind of interesting. Since looting we can maybe cast twice, but it is technically card disadvantage. I think we don't care too much about the card disadvantage, we care more about just finding what we're looking for. Although again the haste on reunion could also come in handy. So, difficult decision, but this is what I'm going with. And then turn one thought sees. Confirming that our opponent's indeed on the energy deck. And yeah, Guide of Souls, Raptor, Ajani, don't trigger with Torpor Orb in play. Now uh, Thrall, I think, shuts down artifacts. Torpor Orb only shuts down creatures. So Unstable Amulet is the only relevant card, I guess, in a way. Even though Ajani could still be a threat if they find a way to transform it. But for now, take Amulets. And then next turn, go digging with Faithless Looting, hopefully finding Croxa or Flage. Opponent carefully reading Torpor Orb, realizing that it is indeed effective. And we found Croxa, perfect. Can still cast it. So despite a mulligan, we still found a decent hand. Now just gotta hope they don't find Static Prison to answer my pieces. A Jani. And Guide. Alright. Now we are at 12, so opponent can still easily outrace us, as opposed to if we had Flage in play. Can start by flashing back looting, and maybe we'll find it. Deafening Clarion, alright, that'll do it too. So, I think I'm still safe to attack, and then next turn Clarion should be able to seal the deal. Opponent actually had another cat in hand, which is a way of still turning a Jani into a real threat. Lurus goes to hand. Opponent attacks. Yeah, I mean, it's impressive how powerful Torpor Orb is in this matchup, especially when our opponent's on the Lurus version, as opposed to a deck that might have Flage themselves. So this is 9 damage, opponent's at 1. 
and then they have to perpetually keep uh, things in hand to discard to Croxa, or they're gonna be dead. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing another Lurus deck, so very likely to be energy. And yeah, our hand's got potential. Torpor Orb is our best card in the matchup. Thought Seize to maybe take away an answer, and then Gamble to try and find one of our Giants. Turn 1 Soul Warden is acceptable. And drawing Thrall gives us a bit of insurance in case we gamble, although I think I still prefer casting Thought Seize here so we can immediately Torpor Orb without our opponent necessarily having answers. But it's got double Discharge in hand. So, Voice plus Soul Warden is a pretty scary combo. So we could take that away before it grows out of Deafening Clarion range. And then we'll still need to eventually deal with Discharge. Times 2 can answer a 6-6 Giant. But uh, I think I prefer slowing down the opponent's pressure early on. Opponent found a Guide of Souls, that's acceptable, since we're gonna shut down the life gain with Torpor Orb soon. Flashing and Thrall to try and block Soul Warden's not gonna work now that we know about Discharge. So, yeah, let's uh, play Torpor Orb. And then next turn, Deafening Clarion could be effective. I do prefer finding Flage over Croxa, just because the extra life gain is useful. Although Croxa could maybe help empty the Galvanic Discharge from their hand. So then they may not be able to answer our 6-6. Six, six. And our opponent also playing the pathway on white, so they may not have double red. To cast both in the same turn, although they can still store up the energy and then cast it on a future turn. They're maybe considering just using the energy to trigger Guide of Souls ability. And if they make a 4 Toughness Guide of Souls, I wouldn't be able to take it out with Clarion. But now we're not worried about our opponent taking out our Giant as much. So hoping they grow Soul Warden. That worked, alright, so Deafening Clarion is still good. And I'll just cast it now. And let's see here, probably want double white for Flage. More likely to draw black and red, naturally. So the board is clean. And next turn we can maybe go with Gamble. And get Flage. Discard Thrall, that was the best case scenario, I think. Play Flage. And, uh, yeah, opponent's gonna need some specific answers. They can play Alurus, get something back, but... Especially with Clarion, we can clean things up nicely. So yeah, I've gotta say we've been pretty lucky with the times we've cast Gamble. Since there's a lot of inherent risk with the card. Although, of course, by getting our Giants with Gamble, at least if we discard them, there's still a chance we can escape them out of the graveyard. So it's not quite as bad. Okay, so Flage attacks. Opponent not willing to deploy Lurus just yet. And then, okay, maybe looting second main or put Giganta in hand. Opponent's at 11. Um, can maybe put Gigant in hand before we cast Looting to have an extra card to discard. Even though if I draw Croxa, I may not be able to cast it right now. I think that's a fine compromise. Although casting Gigant at this point is also reasonable. It's still a 5 5. Maybe we can draw Arena of Glory to give it haste. Found another Flage. Can probably get rid of it and then just keep Giganta, Land, and Clarion. And then we can escape Flage if we need access to another one. So this still names Giant, no need to make Giganta uncounterable. And then we have double black to escape Croxa as well. 
Although I've got a feeling the game's not going to last that long. Opponent reluctant to play Lurus, and you can understand why with Flage on the battlefield. Replays a Guide of Souls and Ocelot Pride. Yeah. So no life gain of Guide. Get to untap. So now we do have to be careful with Deafening Clarion, because otherwise Galvanic Discharge can finish off Flage, and don't want that to happen. So I think we're just gonna attack with Flage, take out Lurus, and then play Gigantha, and that should be good enough. And then our opponent doesn't have enough energy to double block and finish off Flage. So yeah, this game went according to plan. We had the early Torpor Orb. And then we found our Giant. And at this point, probably no need to play a Courtyard in case we want to looting it away. Opponent found a Goblin Bombardment. So now, in combination with Discharge, they could deal 5 damage, but that's not enough to deal with Flage. Or their plan might be to grow the Assault now with a Guide of Souls, gain some life, make a token. That's neat with a Bombardment. But now we don't have to worry about Discharge taking out a creature when we Clarion. Although I guess they do have now enough creatures to sack to Bombardment still to finish off Flage. So this is kind of tricky, but I think we can just solve this issue by attacking, taking out the Ocelots. Uh, does Gamble change anything? Can get Croxa, although it's without haste. Yeah, let's just attack. Finish off the Ocelots, Pun's gonna shoot us for one. So we don't gain life of Flage here. But we shouldn't be in any danger of dying next turn. Opponent chumps. They're definitely putting up a fight. But you know, even if they were to draw something like a Jani, they're out of cats, so they can't even transform it. Since Torpor Orb prevents them from getting a token. And at 6 life, I struggle to think of something that kills me. But uh, I guess we could flashback looting, maybe find something useful. A uh, Thrall, I guess, is an extra blocker, sure. So yeah, Ponon definitely put up a fight, despite facing an early Torpor Orb. And they got kind of close. The uh, synergy with Guide and Ocelot Pride is a nice one. Discharge doesn't have to be a removal spell, sometimes it gives you 2 plus 1 counters and flying. So yeah, the Boros deck continues to prove why it's the highest win rate deck in the format at the moment. It's very resilient, can attack from a lot of different angles, and even if you have some specific hate cards in your deck to try and counter it, they could still find answers to it or some other way around it. So yeah, overall, pretty happy with how this deck turned out. It still remains kind of a meme deck for the most part, so I don't expect it to be particularly competitive, but uh, it's still a lot of fun to cheat out one of these Elder Giants without needing to escape them, especially if you also have a way to give them haste, and the Arena of Glory has been a nice addition to this archetype as well. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.